Be encouraged. Why don't we all repeat that? Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Let's say it one more time. Be encouraged. And we are called to be an encourager as well. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse number 6. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse number 6. Tells us about one of the worst times in David's life. As we heard the evangelist we just had, David had 18 different individual tragedies in his life. People have counted. This is one of the worst. Because what had happened, he goes to war, and he's in the Philistines' army. They reject him. So already, his people are kind of questioning his leadership. And so then when he gets to Ziklag, where the families were, the wives of his soldiers, the children of the soldiers, all their stuff, it had been raided by the Amalekites. They had taken everything away, including David's wife. And so this is just a, a terrible time. And it says in verse 4 of 1 Samuel 30 that David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Anybody ever done that before? Amen. Yeah, amen. And it says in David, verse 6, was greatly distressed. Anybody ever been distressed before? Yeah. He was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. Now I'm going to tell you, as a leader, that's tough. I mean, Stephen got stoned in the New Testament. But when everybody said, we're just going to kill this guy, kind of like Jeremiah. Because all the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But, here's what David did. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. There's sometimes you've just got to look to God and say, God, you're sitting on the throne. I'm going to encourage myself in you. And so that's what David did. And the Old Testament, the Bible says, was written for our instruction, for our ensamples. So David, David did not have the Holy Ghost, lived under the Old Covenant. David did not have the new birth experience the way you and I have the new birth experience. But he could still encourage himself in the Lord. I wonder if we could. Let's ask God to do everything he wants to do in our lives tonight. Let's everybody talk to Jesus together. God, I glorify you. I love you, Jesus. And God, let the word of Christ dwell in us richly tonight. God, have free course. Let your word have free course, God. Let scripture be a hammer breaking in pieces things that don't need to be in our lives. Let it be a fire burning things that don't need to be there, but yet giving energy and strength and power, God, of the Holy Ghost. God, just do wonderful things in our lives tonight, God. And God, I just need you to speak through me tonight. Encourage your people. In Jesus' name, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we go to the book of Judges. Here's what happens. So we, we see David encouraging himself in the Lord. The nation of Israel goes out. They're in civil war and they go out against Benjamin. And Benjamin is vastly outnumbered, but they put tens of thousands of the Israelites to death. And so this is what Judges chapter 20, verse 22 says they did. And the people, the men of Israel, encouraged themselves. And set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array the first day. You know, there's sometimes you wake up and you go to battle for Jesus and you might feel like you lose. I mean, you're just like, oh, I messed up. I didn't do everything I needed to do today. Well, what you need to do is encourage yourself. Wake up again the next day. Start where you were and just say, today I'm going to win the victory. The path of least resistance makes for crooked rivers and crooked people. So sometimes we just, God doesn't take us out of the midst of the situation. God wants to give you and I the power to overcome the situation. Amen. So that's what we learn, Judges 20, verse 22, of several things that are there, is just be encouraged and win the victory the next day. Amen. Now Moses, man, Moses had put up with a lot. And one sin kept him out of the Holy Land. And so Deuteronomy 3.28 is telling us what happened there. But charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him. For he shall go over before this people. And he shall cause them to inherit the land 
which thou shalt see. So Moses couldn't go, but he says, encourage Joshua. You know, there's some things that we just need to encourage other people. We all need to be soul winners. We all need to be intercessors. We all need to have a dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ. But you know, we need to encourage other people to do the same. Amen. And so that's what God told Moses to do. Encourage Joshua because he's going to have to lead this people. So God wants us to be encouraged tonight. There's several scriptures on the subject of encouragement. Now the term encourage, you, you can see it in its very makeup. You know, courage is in there. So the term encourage means to give support, confidence, and hope to. So when we're encouraged, we're getting support, we're getting confidence, and we're giving hope. So God wants us to encourage ourselves in Him. Now I'm going to tell you, if God be for us, who can be against us? Man, it is so encouraging to be living for God in the year 2016. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's some enemies of encouragement. If you and I tonight were to turn on CNN right here, I don't know what's on CNN tonight, but I've got a sneaking suspicion we would watch it for less than 10 minutes and we would not be encouraged. Amen. There's probably somebody rioting somewhere. And there's... there's Something happening somewhere. Maybe a policeman got shot somewhere. Maybe Russia's doing something. Maybe ISIS is doing something. Maybe there's an earthquake like there was in Japan. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes if you entangle yourself too deeply and enmesh ourselves too deeply in this world, man, we're not going to be encouraged because Satan is the little G God of this world. So he's just going to cause chaos. He's going to he's going to cause destruction all over the place. So and in the media they have a saying, and I'm sure we've all heard it, called "If it bleeds, it leads." You know, very rarely do you read in the newspaper. Very rarely, it does happen sometimes, where in the newspaper or on our news feeds does it say. 5,000 people were fed today, and it's not even Thanksgiving. You know, it was two weeks either side of Thanksgiving. Uh, a homeless shelter took in some people. You had 500 people in the United States, you know, get off alcohol or get off drugs. Uh, you had tens of millions of people in church on Sunday. You know, that's not reported widely, is it? Amen. They're going to report bad news because people are going to believe bad news before they believe good news. But tonight, the Church of the Living God, we've got some good news. Amen. Jesus Christ, God in flesh, came for us and He took all of our sins and He hung it on the cross. Amen. Jesus has poured out the Holy Ghost and now the Holy Ghost is not far from each and every one of us. Amen. Man, there is some great news in the world today. There's more people living for God in an Acts 2.38 way to our knowledge than there has been in decades, maybe in centuries, maybe in millennia. Because there, the latter rain is being poured out. The former and the latter rain in one month. God has got a church that he's getting ready to be raptured out of here, to be called away out of here. So there is a lot of good news going on. You've just got to tap into the good news and get the bad news out of your life. Amen. Now, everybody, I remember one guy used to say, I sure could use a little good news. Now, it's not to say that there's not bad things in our lives. But what happens is we turn the molehills into mountains and we turn God's mountains into molehills. Somebody switches the price tags. We need to learn to live in victory. How about that? Amen. Amen. Now let's go to the book of Psalms. Psalm. Let's see. Psalm 125. Psalm 125. Tonight, some good news. We need to be renewed in the spirit of our minds. We need to see what God is doing. 
in our lives personally. You know, we have got the Holy Ghost. We've been baptized in Jesus' name. That is the greatest news any human being can have. There is no better news. Psalm 125, a song of degrees. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Now that's kind of good news there. If you trust in the Lord, you know the Bible says trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your step. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. Satan can't move you off the cross, off the promises of God. The devil can't do it. If you trust in God, you're as Mount Zion. Now this is not on your notes. These are some things that are not in your notes. So, they that... And now verse 2, Psalm 125. Look at this promise of God. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Well, that's kind of good news, isn't it? Amen. That God has surrounded you. Just like the mountains surround Jerusalem, God surrounds you and I. Well, that's really good. When you go to work, God has surrounded you. When you wake up in the morning, God has surrounded you. Whatever it is, here tonight, God has surrounded you. These are promises of God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. This is not in your notes either. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Beginning in verse number 20, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. It says, For all the promises of God in Him, in Christ Jesus, are yea, and in Him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. So every promise of God is yes. God wants to do you and I good. I'm glad about that. He showed us his love at Calvary. If God would come in flesh and go to Calvary, what else would he do for you and I? There is so much good. God loves us and cares for us. So I'm glad that all the promises of God in Jesus Christ are yes and amen. So encourage means to give support, confidence, or hope to. Now the term encourage came into the English language in the early 1400s from an old French word, and it means to make strong, to hearten, to make... So when you encourage somebody, you know, Barnabas was known as a son of encouragement. You know, he wanted to encourage people. Don't you just love people that have a gift of encouragement? I mean, they just say, you can make it, you can do this. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. you got the power of the Holy Ghost. You fall down, you skin your spiritual knee, and they're just like, get back up. A good man falls seven times and gets back up again. Man, we need some encouragement in this end time hour. We need some encouragement that the gifts of the Spirit are still in the church, that God is still a healer, that God is still mighty, that God is still infinitely stronger than the devil, that there's more for us than there is against us. Man, be encouraged. Now, I'm having people tell me, they said, you know, I am concerned that the United States may slip down a precipice of some type of civil war. I saw a headline today that talked about Calexit. And the, the state of California is trying to vote in 2018 whether to leave the United States of America or not. Now I'm going to tell you, we're going to pray in just a moment and then get back into Scripture here. But we're going to pray that God would bring unity in the United States of America. But not just unity because the Tower of Babel was unified. We don't want to be unified under the transgender movement. We don't want to be trans, you know, uh, we don't want to be unified under illicit sex and immorality. We don't want to be unified under, you know, the killing of children and all that. We want to be unified under truth and righteousness and love. And God's love for us. So why don't we pray right now? Because I'm going to tell you when God's people pray, 
God works. Daniel can pray. Amazing things happen. Esther, Mordecai, those people in the capital, they can pray. Amazing things happen. Friend, it's the same God. He's no respecter of persons. God's able to do a miracle. Man, and sometimes it's darkest before the dawn. Sometimes it takes terrible things happening before great revival to, to break out. So why don't we just pray? God, I glorify you. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. God, you said oh, if your glory, people, which are called by your name, should humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven. You would forgive their sin. You would heal our land. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're your people tonight. And God, we're crying out corporately in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that, God, you would pour out your spirit, God, in unprecedented ways in the United States of America. That you would unite us, God, one nation under you, Lord Jesus Christ. God, that you would set up your righteousness, your love, your laws here, God. God, that people would begin to speak in tongues. People would begin, that denominations, entire denominations would be filled with the Spirit. Have an understanding and a revelation of who you are, God, and desire to live for you. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the White House. Let there be an apostolic revival in the White House, in Washington, D.C., God, in every state house, God. God, we trust in you. We believe you, God. God, in your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you. You're bigger than any problem. You're bigger than any need. You're bigger than anything we're facing. God, I glorify you. I thank you for it. God, let our children be raised in a great, beautiful Christian country, God. There may be others here that are not Christian, but they will reap the benefits of a Christianity and a blessing. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, let there be the greatest revival that has ever hit planet Earth, God, on our children, on our young people, God, on our young adults, everybody, young and old alike, God, in Jesus' magnificent holy name. God, I love you, I glorify you, I praise you. You in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you feel some encouragement in Jesus tonight? Amen. Glory to God. You know, God is stronger than the devil. I just want to tell somebody that. God is bigger than the devil. That's right. Amen. All right. We have so much to be encouraged about. Our prayer closet, reading the scriptures, coming to church, doing the right thing. All these things serve to renew our mind. If our mind is not renewed, we will get discouraged. That's the opposite of encouraged. We'll get discouraged. We'll only see the negative and not the incredible positives that God has given us. Anybody here ever been around a negative person? <laughs> Man, is that not just one of the most terrible things to ever be around? I mean, it's like a battery drain. You know, your battery's fully charged, and they're like, I'm sucking the life out of that battery. Let's just say, okay, I think, that this is just me, and I'm probably partial, and I try not to be partial. I try to just tell people the truth, 100% of the time, in love. But I think the song service tonight was absolutely incredible. Amen. Amen. Faith, hey, the spirit of it, the, the God-given talent of it, I thought it was incredible. Amen. I thought it was awesome. But you know, I'll say that, would you believe there's some people here, possibly, maybe not, but in times past, in other churches, not necessarily New Life, there would be somebody, well, I don't know why they didn't take off running while they were sick. They should have just thrown the mics down and took off running. They should have been dancing. This, that should have just blown up. And you know, they are singing so good. I don't understand. I was looking around and I didn't see three people worshiping. <laughs> Isn't that like, I mean, that's like, huh? <laughs> so, and that's just an example. People can be so negative. There's so many people at church on Tuesday night. So many people had to work. So many people out there. But people can be so negative. Instead of looking at the positive, Jesus is here. Right. Angels Amen. are here. The gifts of the Holy Ghost are here. You know, and, and we have to do that in our lives sometimes. You know, sometimes I'll have, uh, you know, 51. And, and I've got a backache sometimes. 
But God will just have to remind me. That back is screaming. But my legs are working. My hands are working. My voice is working. My fingers are working. You know, my liver is working as far as I know. My spleen, my gallbladder, my heart, the veins, my brain. You know, everything I got is working. Except my back hurts a little bit. So I'm going to rejoice in what I got and glorify God and be thankful here on this Thanksgiving time and, and try to live thankfully all of the time and not focus on the negative. If we can ever just stop and begin to glorify God for the positive, that is the realm of miracles. That is the realm of signs. That is the realm of wonders. Because God's just not going to work in a realm of negativity. It is a lack of faith. And when we begin to complain, complaining, the Bible says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Complaining is a lack of thankfulness in the blessings of God in our lives. It's, let me just give you another example. And I'm not talking about old people that or, or people that are highly sensitive to temperature variations. I'm just talking about normal folks. You know, if it's 74 in here, they wish it was 68. And there's some people that if it's 68, they wish it was 74. In the summer, it's too hot. Wish it was colder. In the wintertime, it's too cold. I wish it was warmer. Instead of thinking, man, God is just blessed. Wow, look at Patty P. I'm glad we have climate control. Amen. We could be beaten outside under pecan trees. Amen. So there's always something to be thankful for. Amen. I mean, there just is. There's always a, a something to glorify. A Paul, he went through more than any one human being outside of Jesus Christ that I've ever read about. I mean, just an amazing stuff, and he's just always like, man, I got it. I'm going to heaven. I'm, I'm blessed. This light affliction, but for a moment, worked for me a more exceeding and turn away to glory. I mean, it's just amazing. So he always was focused on the positive, the fact that he's saved, that he's born again of, of, of water and spirit, that he's living for Jesus Christ. He always was able to have his mind renewed. Let's just look at some scriptures tonight about that. I'm going to try not to keep you too long tonight. Romans 8, 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? God is fighting for us all of the time. I see some people getting this. God is for you. God is not against you. It is not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance and everlasting life. Every backslider out there, what's God doing? Knocking on the door. The heart's door. He's saying, come on in. He's standing. Oh, are they going to come down the road? What does the Father do? He goes running. God is for us. You know, Emmanuel, God with us. And now Pentecost, God for us. God is for you and I. God wants you to live for Him. He wants to give you life in that more abundantly. Romans 8, 35 and 37. Who shall separate us from the love of God? You ever sometimes feel like God's nowhere around? Shall tribulation? No. Distress? No. David showed us that. Persecution? No. Famine? If it don't rain soon, we may be there. No. Or nakedness? No. Peril? No. Sword? No. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Again, if God be for us, who can be against us? Now, we need to pray for rain. Why don't we do that right now? Let's just pray for rain, that God would give us rain. It has been almost 60 days since we've had rain, 57 days. And there's none in the forecast for a long time. Why don't we pray? God, I glorify you. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. And God, you see, we need rain, Lord Jesus Christ. And God, we're just asking you to give us the rain that you want to give us, God. And we know you're bigger. We know the meteorologists don't cause the weather. They just interpret it and forecast it, God. You're able to give us rain, God. And we will give you all the glory, all the honor, all the thanksgiving. God, even if we corporately, God, as a... As a 
people in the United States. Maybe we don't deserve it, God. But God, we love you and we do ask you to give us rain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask it. Let's everybody say amen. Why don't we clap amen. our hands to Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. We can be thankful. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. 2 Corinthians 4, 17. For our light affliction. Later on in 2 Corinthians, he talks about, I've been beaten with rods thrice, you know. Uh, you know, with stripes, 40 minus 1 several times. Just amazing. And he called it a light affliction, which is but for a moment. Working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Anything we're going through, it seems like desperate at the moment, it's a light affliction. Romans 8.18, let's renew our minds in Jesus. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So we have sufferings in this present time, but there's glory that's going to be revealed in us. Shekinah is going to shine through us. Revelation 12, 4, the very first part of this, talking about Satan. It says his tail, Satan, as a dragon, drew the third part of the stars of heaven and it cast them to the earth. That's what one-third of the angels, as you read it and interpret it, it's one-third of the angels fell. That means two-thirds didn't fall. So there's two good angels for every devil. Besides God... So you and I, we're on the winning side. God couldn't do more for us. He has given us the greatest plan of salvation. The greatest thing. He couldn't do any more. He calls us. He woos us. He knocks on the heart's door. He loves us. He's given us scriptures. He's given us every opportunity. Revelation 1.8. Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I love it. God's not the sub-mighty. He's the Almighty. That means He's bigger than your depression. He's bigger than your distress. He's bigger than your problem. He's bigger than your bills. He's bigger than your marriage issues. God is the Almighty. Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Why did you let Daniel go in the lion's den? Because it would encourage billions of people down through the ages. Why did you let Job go through that? Because billions of people have been encouraged by what Job went through. And he got twice as much as he ever had before. Why did you let Joseph go get falsely accused as a slave and be put into prison 13 years? Why did you let that happen? Because it was working together. I want to make him co-king. And I want to save my people. The line of Messiah is going to come through them. Everything is working together for your good. If you love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. So no matter what you're going through. Now if it's a chastening of the Lord that you cause. Then you need to repent. And let God straighten you out. But if you're trying to live for Jesus, best way you know how, and bad things are happening, it's working. It's going to work together for your good. Amen. It is happening for your good. Did I tell that story about uh, the brother from Arab, Alabama here? The one that uh, lost his church. Did I tell y'all a story about the pastor in Arab, Alabama? That, uh, that uh, they foreclosed on his church. Have y'all heard of that? Okay, here's what happened. He was running almost 200 people. He had a 34,000 square foot building. It had uh, several, it had eight air conditioner units in it. And the 2008 uh, financial crash hit and everybody moves out. You know, he loses half his church because they can't find work there in that little small town. And so he's just living on a wing and a prayer for year after year after year. Finally, the Christian credit union that he's got his loan through 
It was five thousand dollars a month. They owed over seven hundred thousand dollars on their building. They were they never missed a payment. But they did an audit on this church, and they said, "Man, you, you you shouldn't be making it. We're calling our loan in thirty days." And so the pastor, I won't mention his name. He goes and he starts crying out to God. God, what's going to happen? God speaks to him. everything's going to be all right. He's like, "I don't see how." So he goes a few days later. He's like, "God, we need a miracle." He says, trust me, everything's going to be all right. You need to have a church meeting and tell the people everything's going to be all right. So he has a church meeting. He says, look, guys, I don't know how everything's going to be all right. He said he plastered a smile on his face, and he said he didn't even believe it. He said he had heard God from God. God told him. He, didn't. he said he didn't know any way out. He said, I didn't even believe what I was telling him. But God told him to say it, so I said it. And so he's like, everything's going to be all right. So they foreclose on the church. And so they're praying. They're like, God, where are we supposed to go? What are we supposed to rent? God speaks to him, says, ask them to let you rent your old building. So he calls them. He says, I'd like to rent my old building. So he said after two or three weeks, they finally said, okay, you can rent your old building. And they said, how much are you willing to pay? He had prayed. He felt like God told him, told him offer him $1,000 a month. So he says, I'll give you $1,000 a month. They didn't want to do it. They finally said, okay, we'll do it for $1,000 a month. So he's saving $4,000 a month. Immediately after that happened, a couple of his AC units went out. Kapow. That was almost $10,000 per AC unit went out. If I remember correctly, it was two at that time. And so he calls them. Now, if you're written someplace, what do you do if something goes out? You call. So he calls his landlord, the Christian Credit Union, and says, hey, guys, AC's out. He says, but we got, I know a guy, and it was a guy at the church, that can take care of it. He says, just tell him to take care of it and send us the bill. So not only did the Christian Credit Union pay for all that, it blessed the church because it was a guy in the church doing the work. It's a guy in the church doing the work. So then the steeple fell off and the roof collapsed in the sanctuary. So he calls them and says, Hey guys, he said, The steeple fell off, this church we're renting, and the roof collapsed. He said, you need to fix this. And if you need documentation, I've got it on my phone. I can show it to you after church. And we're, he sent this testimony. Actually, a friend of his sent this testimony to me. And has his name, name of the church, name of it. It's fully documented. And so they said, okay. He says, but I know some guys in our church that can take care of this. So they get a new steeple. They redo their church. They've been wanting to paint the hallway for years. Couldn't afford to paint it. And they painted the hallway. Sent them the bill. They paid it. So now, get this. They, the Christian insurance paid for all of it. And then it blessed the church because church people were getting the money doing the work. <laughs> and then a couple more AC units went out. So he calls them. Yeah, they just fix it. Send us the bill. So he does fixes it. And so they said they'd just been having church for years with a for sale sign out front. A friend of theirs that was a real estate agent called and said, look, the Christian insurance agency, Christian uh, credit union, excuse me, is slashing the price of this church immensely. And said there is interest in it. So they slashed it from 700000 they owed over 700000 to 450000 and there was another church. Well see, for years, they had been able to save $4,000 a month. <laughs> so they had a ton of money in the bank. So they prayed, and they felt like God said, offer them this amount. So they went, and they offered them $345,000. And that was the high bid. And they took it, and their, their payments were slashed by thousands of dollars. So, God knew that there were four ACs about to go out. He knew the steeple was about to fall off that was going to collapse the roof. 
God knew all of that in advance. God, instead of them owing over 700000 he slashed their mortgage to, you know, to, they bought it for under $345,000 or $345,000 and slashed their monthly payments. Because all things are working together for your good. Thank Even you. when you don't know it. And that's why we just did everything to give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ concerning us. Romans 8.32, just a few more scriptures. Uh, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? It reminded me of James 4, too. We have not because we ask not. Ask in faith. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. Paul says, we are troubled on every side. Paul wasn't some guy that was immune to problems. He and his entourage, they were troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Why? Because they were casting all their care upon Jesus. We are perplexed. They said, we don't even know what to do. But not in despair persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. And that's very important. When you get down, don't get destroyed. We have a promise of God in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So God's not going to let you and I, the promise, be tempted above that which we're able to bear. Why? God will stop it before it overwhelms us. And He will make a way of escape. Psalm 34, 7 says, The angel of the Lord encampeth. And camp is, I mean, it's wherever you go, camping is not a permanent dwelling, but it is a permanent place. The permanent place is around us. And wherever we go, he just pulls up stakes and goes with us. He's in camping. The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivereth them. In 2 Kings chapter 6, again, it was two men versus an army. But Elisha had spiritual eyes. We need to ask God to open our spiritual eyes in every situation. So in verse 15 of 2 Kings 6, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and going forth, behold, a host compassed or encircled the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And Elisha says, Fear not been said there's about 365 fear not, be not afraid things of that effect in scripture one for every day of the year for they that be with us are more than they that be with them and Elisha prayed, now notice what he prayed, he didn't pray God kill the army he said God open my servant's eyes that he may see and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. So there was an earthly army, and there was a spiritual army that was bigger than the earthly army. Sometimes you're surrounded by circumstances. You're surrounded by death. You're surrounded by doubt. But you're also surrounded by the Spirit of God. And the love of God that's bigger than the mountain that surrounds you bigger than every army of it. Some of you, sometimes you feel like, man, Satan has unleashed every devil in hell against me. And guess what? He probably hasn't. Because there's 7.6 billion other people he's unleashing demons on. It doesn't mean you're not under attack. But God is bigger. If he did unleash every demon in hell against you, you still win. You're in Mount Zion. You shall not be moved if you trust in God. Can you say amen? amen? Don't you just love this? Hallelujah. I love 
the love of God. Isaiah 54, 17, another promise of God coming to a quick close. No weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Think about it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Satan wants to create new havoc in our lives. It's not going to prosper against you. Philippians 1 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Paul was talking about, I know how to be abased, I know how to abound, and he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. 1 John 4 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And there is a tremendous message just on that. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Why? Because you know it's working together for your good. God, I thank you that you're awesome. I thank, thank you, you that you're in the palm, that I'm in the palm of your hand. I thank you that you're taking care of me and you've surrounded me. God, I glorify you. In everything, give thanks. Notice it doesn't say for everything, give thanks. You don't sit there and say, thank you, God, for cancer and leukemia. You don't do that. But if you get that, then you say, in everything, give thanks. In the midst of my trial, I give you thanks. Amen. I glorify Thank you, Jesus. You understand the distinction? Worthy, Lord. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In, in whatever you're going through, give God thanks. We're on the winning side. Have a great Thanksgiving. Why don't we just stand to our feet and why don't we just all talk to the Lord Jesus Christ right now. And uh, God wants to encourage some saved people tonight. Hallelujah. If you're not saved, God wants to encourage you to get saved tonight. Let's everybody talk to Jesus. God, I glorify you. God, I thank you, God. This Thanksgiving season, but not just then, God, remind all of us, God, to continually give you thanks. The fruit of our lips, giving thanks to your name. God, help us to worship you, Lord Jesus Christ. Open our spiritual eyes that we can see in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I love you. I worship you. I praise you. I glorify you. God, we want to encourage ourselves in you tonight, Lord Jesus Christ. God, we don't look at the circumstance. We look at the provider. We look at the sustainer. We look at the lover of our soul. God, I glorify you. I love you, Jesus. God, strengthen us. Let us order our steps in your word, Jesus, so we can walk in victory. You've already more than provided for us to make it, God. An entrance is abundantly open, Lord Jesus Christ. But let us order our steps in you, God. We can make it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love you, King Jesus. I glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you just pray a prayer of encouragement for the person next to you? God, I glorify you. I love you. God, I ask you to minister right now to Brother Ron. Bless him to be greater than he has ever been.